Welcome to One Million Cent, the podcast where we equip you to share Jesus. Hey, One Million Cent, One Million Cent, get them trained in the crib, 100%. One Million Cent, One Million Cent, get them trained in the crib, like 100%. All right, well, guys, today I'm so excited to have a great friend with us, Byron Copeland. How are you today, my I'm friend? I'm great. Glad to be here with you, man. Man, you know what I love? You showed up early today. I love that. You just made my anxiety level just decrease <laughs> immediately when I saw your smile walk in. So thanks for being. And if not, I show up late, the rest of the that's day it, is that's just it, the man. dominoes yeah, dude, yeah, start it's, falling. It's, so it's going to show up. <laughs> that's right. Just show up. You know, so you're not just here, but you came early. So that's a double blessing. But and I heard this recently. Life rewards action. Come on. Hey, so that's true. Get that's, your butt up and get hey, up here. Get out of here. Let's get going. I love it, man. Well, you, man, thank you for helping us kick off our day. And um, I, I want to start where kind of our whole relationship started, man. And that was on a cargo plane to Ecuador. Yeah. How weird, huh? <laughs> kind of crazy, man. So, I so I guess that was 2017, I think. Maybe. Um, we uh, both were invited to go to Ecuador with Operation Christmas Child. Yep. And we ended up on... It was a cargo plane, right? It was a right? cargo, yeah. Franklin Graham's ministry, they they bought this plane and converted it. Most of it had, you know, those Christmas child boxes, That's probably right. 100 million of those I, things on this plane. Oh, my word. And they, they kept one little part where probably 20, 30 seats. Yeah. And that's where we were sitting we were. with no heat. With no heat, yes. It was yes. like sitting in a metal box. It, it, that's exactly what it was. Exactly. <laughs> I remember. Well. And so we ended up on the same row together. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember if you sat yeah. down first or we were there, but we sat down. Awkward silence there for a bit. And just somebody a little, kicked it off. Just a little bit. Just and we a little became bit. buds, fast <laughs> friends, man. It was awesome. And, and as we got to talking, you were there with your wife, Rochelle, and we were just talking about ministry history and things like that and where you're from and, you know, just what everybody does is they get to talking and, and found out, small world, we served literally like I thought five minutes. Byron's pretty sure it's like half a mile or no, mile. No, I can throw a rock <laughs> and hit the edge of yeah, that church. That's right. So no, we're, we're literally probably a half yeah, mile. Yeah. First Assembly of God, Rose Park Baptist. Yeah. And we were so focused on doing ministry, yeah. we didn't even go we down the road and knock on nah. the door and go, hey, hey, brother, I'm next door to you. Right, hey, man, that's right. Why don't we do this? That's right. That's right. It's so true. And anyway, but it's it's such a wild thing to think about. Um, you never know who's right beside you. You yeah. never know who's in the next church down the road. And um, But... Man, we we became friends. I, I gave them a ride home from <laughs> from after our trip to Ecuador, which was awesome. I love Byron. Was like, no, 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 we'll get a we'll get a ride. Saved us a hundred bucks. I was man. like, listen, bro, you're not getting a ride. Get I have a suburban with just me. Get in the car, all right? So, <laughs> so took him uh, home. Rochelle man. loves you for yeah, this, man. man. She's love, like, he's my right. friend. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and comes and we don't even live that far from each other now, no. which is we live maybe you know again ten minutes from each other. Probably. You know, it's one of the reasons why you know. It's so fun walking with God. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we're not so tunnel vision in life and we're just going, Lord, what do you have today? Yeah. You look around He's and you everywhere. build a relationship like this. Yes. So yes. God puts you in a situation. That's what is so fun yeah. walking with the Lord and Meeting people like you, <laughs> hey, man. man it's, it's, we got a friendship now. It, that's it, man. We're, we weren't even planning on that. We weren't even planning on it, but God had a plan a long yes, time did. ago. And and then, you know, um, in 2019, I stepped out from being a full-time pastor to travel full-time. And, um, you know, as you share that with pastor friends and everything, a lot of people, you know, pat you on the back, send you a thumbs up on text, like, hey, all right, awesome. Uh, but you, I, I believe if, and and I could be wrong, but you were one of the only ones who said, hey, come over here, come rest, man, come just sit for a little bit. And um, and it wasn't like you were trying to get us to your church. It was like you just cared about our soul. And, um, and man, I'm so grateful for that. And uh, my family's grateful for that. My wife's grateful for that. And um, hey, thank so you. thank you, brother, just for doing that. And And then I think... Oh, he, man, he he really likes me. And then you, I find out you do this for everybody. You love everybody like this. So that's, that's even better. I love this. Uh, I'm trying. And you know yeah. where that comes from really is um, 33, 34 years of ministry. Just the fact that 
we need a lot of TLC to keep this go. thing going. Yeah, that's right. We need man. a lot of TLC from him. That's right, yeah. And we need a lot of TLC from one another. Mm, and so true. looking around as a minister, as a believer, going, man, I need some encouragement right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I need it. That's right, yeah. I got to start giving it away if I need it, and, <laughs> and God's helped Have me along Have you found that to be true, Byron, that, man, and, and there's probably a lot of people who'll be listening to this or, or watching this. They're leaders. Um, yeah. they're, they're, they're Christian. They're in the church. Maybe they're on staff. Or maybe maybe they're just you know quote unquote you know normal everyday believers who are out in the world and they just need encouragement. Have you found that when you give encouragement, you often often get it back in ways that you can't even imagine? Yeah, I mean it's you know we give and we we get it back, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We sow. Yeah, yeah there you God go. God gives it back, mm. and so we don't live in a perfect world. We live in a, you know a world with a lot of challenges. And so occasionally God's going, you need it. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's the thing that I'm asking you to do. Yeah, that's good. And I found that, you know, for me, um, you know, kind of walking through the church world mm-hmm. and kind of having this idealism about uh, spiritual fathers and mentors that's and kind of heroes. and. Yeah. There are a lot of those, but I, I, you know, it never quite reached my standard. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah. And so, I, you know, at times I felt like, man, I'm alone in this deal. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people feel that way, not only uh, ministers, but but people of faith going, I, I need connection. We desire that. And that is part of God's plan. He doesn't want, to, want us to walk alone. But, right. you know, at a certain point as I got older going, you know, look, I can sit around and think about this all the time, or I can start giving what I need. And what's been so cool is that God has returned that back to me. Like I have people like you in my life and so many others who, you know, are just kind to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good lesson for us. Sometimes we give what we know we need and God will return it. That's right. I love that. That's that's (laughs) so good. You know, as people are listening in, I want you to really grab that and maybe maybe even write that down somewhere. It's like, hey, if you want it, give it first, you know? And it's the law of the harvest, like you just said, right? You cannot reap what you have not sown. Right. And when you sow this stuff in the people, um, I think the harvest sometimes comes in, in ways and maybe from places you can't even imagine, right? So... Um, now, now tell us what, what, what are you doing now? I mean, you, you, you've been on staff at several different churches. Mm -hmm. Um, God's given you big platforms and you've influenced a lot of leaders. Um, so what's happening in your world right now? How would you describe what Byron Koblen gets to do today? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, I'm going to say what I'm actually doing and Mm -hmm. I'm going to say what it really looks like in my spiritual life. Okay. Um, And I'm going to start with what it really looks like in my spiritual life (laughs) and what it looks like in my spiritual life as a person who's been at this a a while. And, you know, I have a wife. uh, We've been married almost 33 years. I have three sons all in their 20s. So we're... We're kind of empty nesters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they keep coming back. We, we, like, we, we kind of actually <laughs> yeah, like them to come, come back, back. Like, come, come on back, back please. Right. So yes, they're in yes. and out, and we like that. We're kind of yeah. home base. But personally, what's happened is, for me, my ministry life has always been defined. I've always been at a place for a, an amount of time. Gotcha. You know, I'm not a settler necessarily, um, but... I've been at places, and so I'm here. And I've been at a church 20 years. I've been at church at Gateway Church for almost 20 years. So, wow, wow. So I, I forgot, man. That that's a 20, long haul at any church. That's a long haul. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Doing anything. That's a yeah. yeah In this that's, day and age, that's fair. That's I mean, fair. Doing anything. That's doing fair. anything. And so to make that transition and to know that it was time for a change, basically, what happened as I made that change, there was so much uncertainty behind it. But God was leading me to this place because basically what happened when I looked at my future, the road just vanished. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It disappeared. There you go. And honestly, there was light and there was darkness, but it was like, I cannot see the path ahead. Mm -hmm. And so I'll say this to to everyone out there right now, part of, you kind of know that, you kind of know that you're heading into your purpose when you can't see the path ahead. Wow, there you go. The Lord almost 
wants us to kind of have this sensation. And want, it's kind of like the disciples in Christ in the boat, and the boat's going down, water's coming over the side. He's sleeping, and they're freaking out. Yeah, yeah. And he says to them, why are you so afraid? <laughs> when, when it was all said and done, he goes, why are you so afraid? Oh, like, yeah. why don't you still don't quite have enough faith? And he wasn't condemning them or anything no. like that because there was not a condemn, condemning bone in his body. Right. It was like, I'm back here sleeping and you're freaking out. Just look over at me. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> it's okay. And so most of the time we're just so afraid. Yeah, yeah. We're so afraid of, oh, my gosh, I don't know what a week from now looks like. Right. I don't know what a year from now looks like. And, you know, you get to be an older veteran in this, you know, not only in ministry but in life. Yeah. And it, you go, oh, my gosh, I don't know what it looks like. And God's going, why are you so afraid? You still don't have enough faith, Byron yeah. Copeland? Come on, dude. <laughs> I'm the creator of the universe. Yeah. I got this figured out. I made the water, the winds and the waves and all of it. Mm. And and he's nudging us. He's nudging us to face your fears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know where I'm going to be in three, five, ten years. Yeah. The road disappeared. Now, I left Gateway. Hold, hold, we okay. made a transition. Yeah, pause right there for a second. Yeah. I, I want to really capture this. The whole road disappeared because I had the road disappear moment on me when I was serving as lead <laughs> pastor at the Mount. Yep. And, you know, some people say, oh, well, you lost vision. or, or you, So I tell some people sometimes, yes, you can, you, you're like, hey, man, I'm so busy with day to day and so ingrained in the minute that I've kind of lost vision of where God wants to take us. So you pull away, you retreat. And you spend with the Lord, and maybe he gives you that vision. But I remember, man, being like where you were, and I pulled away, and I retreated, and I sought the Lord, and I just kept getting nothing, you know, as far as direction for the church. And that was really a sign for me that God had something next for me that that wasn't yeah. at the church. Is that kind of where you landed as well? Yeah, you know, I had some gr I had great years at Gateway Church. Yeah. I mean, those yeah. were just, I mean, it was just spectacular, okay? And I knew it was time to go. Um, and so I just knew. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like you. Yep. And you don't, you're kind of arguing with God about it and going, I want to hold on because there's security and yeah. identity and importance and all this stuff in that, right? <laughs> and the Lord's going, yeah. No, I, I, I'm, I'm calling you to, to yeah. step out. Yeah. Where am I going? Yeah. I don't know where <laughs> I'm going. And so, um, yeah, I mean it, it was it was it was terrifying. Yeah. It was absolutely that. terrifying. But the Lord uses those moments because he wants us to know who we are and he wants to teach us that he's and who he he's is. He's our in provision. Those moments. Yeah, he's got us. He's yeah. got everything. Yeah, yeah. But he does not want his kids walking around. And guys, listen, there's a bunch of people out there listening to this right now. I say this, the potential of fear in Byron Copeland is fear. Mm. So if the enemy knows right now he can touch me in a spot and it's going to send me jumping. Yeah. Yeah. The potential of fear is fear. And God wants to milk that out of our system. He wants to get it out. Mm. He wants to get it out because he wants us to be free. Yeah. Yeah. And when we're a little, and, and free is progressive, right? It, it, a little bit at a That's time. That's right. Yeah. Transformation, one step at a time, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, like freedom we give our kids, right? You don't just give them a car. Right. You give them a little bit of freedom at a time. You don't just hand them a iPhone at eight years old and go, hey, good luck. No, you give them and you train them and you give them. I like that. Give them a, a little freedom. And man, there's so many, I think those physical things, realities in our world that translate. God's like, yeah, that's the spiritual truth I've been trying to tell you. Yeah. A little freedom at a time. Go ahead with that. A little freedom at a time. Yeah. And and so you wake up and you go, man, I feel free. I, I'm free right now. Well, how are you? Can't, so what, how do we define that? Yeah. You know, define that is, okay, so the road disappeared in front of me. What am I doing? Am I curled up in a ball over here? Yes. Yeah, man. Or, or am I going, okay, God, I trust you. You got it. 
Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to make this transfer of fear and all of this to you. And so that, that is what we do. And so that, that's freedom for us. And it's progressive (laughs) and we get to a place where we feel like I, I I sense God's freedom. He can, he can kind of mold me and shape me in the way that he wants. He can actually ask me to do things that I will actually say yes to. Yeah. He will allow me to enjoy the moment I'm in right now. That's freedom. Yes. Yes. And I, believers, are you are you enjoying the moment you're in right now? Right. Well, no, it's terrible. It's hard. I mean, I'm in a miserable spot. No, I'm asking, are you enjoying the moment right now? Yeah. God paid a dear price for us to enjoy this moment mm-hmm. right now. And and so that's that's what the Lord's done. He's allowed me to enjoy these moments, no matter if if maybe it looks terrifying out there. Right. Right. And you can apply that to anyone. Yeah. A, yeah. a person who's been in ministry or a teenager going, yeah. why are you afraid? Yeah, I remember no. I remember when I was a, a youth pastor full-time, um, and I felt God calling me to start traveling as an evangelist. And I remember praying this, Byron, maybe maybe y'all have prayed, and maybe y'all listened and prayed something like this. I was like, okay, God, when you open the door, I'll go. When you open the door, I'll go. When you open the door, I'll go. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I probably prayed that. And it was one night, and it wasn't, like like you, it wasn't in in, in a, a rebuke from the Lord, but it was just like the Lord just whispered to me, says, "When you take a step, I'll open the door." Why? Because that's faith, right? But walking by faith is not waiting on the the door to open. Walking by faith is saying, "God, I'm taking this next step, and I'm trusting you with it. I'm trusting you with this." And 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 I just it was as clear as day. Hey Ryan, when you take a step. I'll open the door. This is no joke. So I went to my, my lead pastor, my senior pastor, and I said, hey, I think it's time for me to start traveling. Um, you know, I'd shared with him this burden I had for evangelism and stuff, and and that I felt, hey, one day God would be having me do this. And and I went to him, and and I said, hey, I, th- I think it's getting close. I think I need to I need to resign. And and he goes, oh, okay. Do you have a bunch of, bunch of events lined up? I go, No. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, oh, okay. And uh, that was it. That was it. Okay. And so this is no joke. I go home that night and somebody calls me. I don't know the guy. He doesn't know me. We only have a connection through his brother who I think it, he had heard me speak at like a youth event or anyway, he said, hey, you don't know me. I don't know you, but I'm a youth pastor over here at this church, and um, and we've got a winter retreat coming up, and we're looking for a speaker. Would you happen to be available? <laughs> and I, I was like, this is no joke. This is how dumb I was. But I was like, let me check my calendar. <laughs> Like I had nothing. I knew I had nothing. I think here. I could squeeze right, you right. in. Yeah, <laughs> let me get you right between these two big events of nothing. That uh, yeah. So, but it was such a cool. It was literally an immediate door open. I took a step, went and talked to my pastor. That night, a door opened, and and like when like you said, I didn't see a. There wasn't a ten year plan laid out in front of me. It was like all I know to do is like <laughs> I've got to take this step, and when I do. God opens up. Have you seen that happen since you've taken this step? That's a massive step to step out from security, I'm sure, from comfort, from from family and relationships and friendships. All of it. Two decades. I mean, you could just probably, uh, yeah. Terrifying. Uh, uh, terrifying, right? But have you seen God, tell us a way you've seen God just, give, give us an example of a way that God just provided. Yeah, I mean, the this, this story was similar to yours. I resigned, and I've been at gateway for that long. And again, great, great memories and everything. I knew it was time, time to go. And people ask me, what are you going to do? I have, I go, I have no idea. (laughs) I'm terrible at politicking. Yeah, that's right, man. Like I I am, I am not the guy who's trying to work on three jobs down the road right right now. I don't need, my mind does not even work that way. So I never thought about not being at gateway church. Mm -hmm. And so what am I going to do next? Well, I start kind of getting moving. I, you know, as when my time ended at Gateway for several weeks, I'm trying to network and people are calling me, hey, what's going on? And, yeah. you know, what are you going to do next? And all this. And I'm, you know, I got to get my next gig. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got to figure this out. <laughs> I gotta, and really what motivated that was I got to take care of my family. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Provider, man. I mean, it was kind of, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do, but it was more, 
I got to pay the bills. <laughs> That's, amen. Yeah. Yeah. So you see where I was. Yeah. I was at that place where I got to pay the bills. So I had I had taken myself down to, mm. hey, look, it's a noble thing to pay the bills. Absolutely. But that's where I was. That's right. I was yeah. more concerned about, you know, paying our bills instead of being the person God's called me to be and living the way he's called me to live and doing what he's, you know, being the person that I even need to be to my wife and family mm. and to myself and yeah. to him. So so that that's kind of what it looked like. And so... God, I'm 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 trying to move and go and, and start my next thing. And God's like, I sensed the Lord just pushing on me. And he was not only doing that by his spirit, he was doing that through Rochelle. And yeah. Rochelle says, I think you need to rest. That's a good word. Like you have not rested. You you've been going at this for 30 something years, Byron. You have not stopped. And so she's she's seeing something I can't see. She's like, this guy is so driven, he can't stop. So, Ryan, it took me several months to slow down to stop. What do we say? Uh, we got to slow down to catch up to God. That's good, man. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> we got to slow down Golly. to catch up to God. Yeah. And you've also heard what Jesus changed the world at three miles an hour. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's how, that's how fast that's how people goes. walk. That's I mean, right. he changed the world. Like, he... he me taking two months off or taking some time off or resting is not going to throw the whole thing off. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. And then there was a point of, Lord, what do you want me to do next? So this, this was really interesting. I'd never had this happen before, but I'm praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Who am I? Like, what's, what's my purpose on this planet, you know, and all these things? Yeah. And this is what I sensed the Lord whisper back to me in thoughts. What do you want to do? And I'm like, no, uh, what do you want me to do? And then I sensed the Lord again said, it dropped in my mind. What do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. Ryan, I had not even thought in my lifetime as a believer, I was 55 at the time. I was saved at First Baptist Church, Keithville, Louisiana. Oh, man. At, you know, Let's go. 13 yeah. years old, youth camp, Camp Bethany, that whole world. Wow. You remember all those places, right? I know right? all those places. I never even thought, what do I want to do? I'd always been, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do, whatever you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. And guys, this is what I want you to hear on this, is that the Lord is trying to grow you to a place because he put all these gifts in you where you can actually... Where, where we are so connected to him and, and what he wants is what we want. There you go, yeah. Where we can dream about how we're going to mm -hmm. change the world. That's right. And not feel guilty about it. That's right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. This, this was the exchange. Byron, what do you want to do? Yeah. And I had to process this out. I'm not sure. You're like, I don't I, know. <laughs> and, you know, in, in that whole exchange was a, a, a church said, hey, would you be open to come helping us? And um, I'm like, I, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to figure this out where I'm at on this planet right now as mm -hmm. a believer. I know the Lord, but God's doing some identity things in me right now. And uh, Cross Timbers Church in Argyle, Texas, uh, Josiah Anthony is, is the pastor there. He's a young guy. He's, He's solid, man. Yeah, yeah. And we started connecting, and he asked me to come help him. And I said, I, ju I just want to come help you, and I want to help Cross Timbers Church. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I love it. I have a position there. Yeah. I'm not just a vagabond, you know, squatting <laughs> at Cross Timbers <laughs> Church. Squatting. <laughs> Some people might think I am, but Who's I'm there. Squatter? And all I really want to do is help. I, I honestly right. have no ambition in ministry right now. I have zero ambition in ministry right now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm in ministry, yeah, full time, right? It feels good, yeah. And the road has disappeared in front of me. There you go. And it's <laughs> hey, bro, that may so be a book excited. you need to write. The day the road disappeared in front of me. <laughs> this is a uh, our Lisa Blood man. This is so good. I just that imagery is so good, man, because it Disappear. freaks us all out for that to happen, right? Especially if you're probably wired like we are. We, we want to plan. Um, you know, we have a vision. We know, hey, here's where we need to go. And when that just kind of disappears, it can be a really frightening thing if our hope 
and our faith is not in God. If if and it's in those moments, like when I stepped away, you know, from youth ministry, and then when I stepped away from full time pastoring to to go back to traveling, like it is a time where the Lord's like, "Yep, yeah, yeah." I, it's like you said, I'm I'm just worried about you know putting bread on the table, and in those moments, you're like, "God, I've never put bread on the table." You know, like like I've I never, thought I. Ryan, I thought I did, though. Yeah, exactly. You know, there was a part of yeah. me that thought, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm a good provider. You yeah, know, that's we're, right. Yeah. If you're a Copeland, man, you're you're kind of a workaholic. There you go. Okay. We, we're going to earn it. <laughs> Y'all we're going to earn you're that You're not thing. afraid to work, man. We're I love, not yeah, afraid to work. Right. But, yeah. you know, but it, it, it had crept in. It was, you know, mm-hmm. uh, progressively the Lord had taken right. me along. And I was at a point now where God was like, I want that to be solved. Yeah. I don't want you thinking you did it. Man, come what, on. It, what does it say? You know, in my early years, I worked uh, for God. Uh, then I started working with God. Yeah. Now I watch God work. Come on, man. Now I watch Him work. That's gold, bro. I, I'm, I'm gonna watch Him work, Lord. I'm I'm here. I'm yeah. willing to to jump in with you. You yeah. know, life rewards action. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of this, yeah, the real supernatural things are gonna happen because you're doing something. Your, your your kingdom is coming and you're moving in in this place right now. Yeah. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna be paying attention enough to know where you're moving and I'm gonna mm-hmm. step right in there and support it. Dude, that's so good. I love <laughs> so, it. Well, I was thinking about earlier when you said that, you know, how how you have no ambition, you know, the Lord the it was when 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 the question got flipped. God, not what do you want me to do for you, but then God said, Hey, what do you want to do? And it reminded me of, of Psalm 37, 4, right? Delight yourselves in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And as yeah. we delight ourselves in God, like you said, our heart becomes molded and engrafted in his heart, and I, his desires become our desires. Mm-hmm. And that's why in those seasons, the Lord can go, what do you want to do? What if I, it's almost like he's saying, in a, what did I put in you? Romans eight twenty eight. All that's things it. work yeah, together for good. Right. You know, and, and for those listening, like some people are like, Man, I don't know what I should do. Hey, get with the Lord, be with the Lord, delight yourself in the Lord and see what bubbles up. You know, see where your passions are, see where it's see where man your your fire just comes out. And um I just love that the Lord just kind of flipped the script on you there. And he did. Uh, what what do you want to do? Well, <laughs> and, and some of my struggle, you know, growing up uh in the faith was um, there was a lot of condemnation and shame, and I and I, and it's probably you know some of the way that I'm made. You know, all of us are flawed, and we have struggles and this right. and that, and so we we tend to go that direction anyway. And we're sort of built on this planet to perform mm-hmm. and to earn it. Yeah, and that seeps into the church world. Where is it really a free gift, or do I got to earn it? Well. Yeah. As a young person who gave their life to Christ and really wanted to follow the Lord, I had it in my mind that, you know, God is up here and I'm not good enough and I got to earn it. Yeah, man. So it became about, you know, works and earning. And if I was making good decisions, it, I was, it was good. If I'm making some bad knuckleheaded decisions... I, it's it, so it was up and down, and a right. lot of people are there, especially a lot of teenagers. Yeah, that we sense that it's about our performance, mm-hmm. but the Lord's already taken care of that. He's right. already done it, and so my struggle was, you know, you know, we see the word servant in the Bible a lot, but mm-hmm. really, God wants sons and daughters. Yeah. yeah, and so I was a good servant, and I've been a good servant on this planet. But God really wanted me to be a son. Wow. And so it's kind of really interesting, Ryan, you know, at, at, at my age that God is having to sort of bring this around that it's, you know, and that's why I'm in trying to encourage anybody who's listening to this. If you yeah. can figure this out earlier, you know, John 1, 12 says, to as many as received him, to them he gave the right. Yeah, that's good. Listen. If you believe in Jesus, you have a right to live as a son or daughter yeah, of God, yeah. which will allow you to get to your purpose quicker than I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I've been a servant, and I have a good track record of being a servant, but what a lot of people can't see on the backside of this is that 
the price that I paid for that, mm -hmm. the stress, the worry, the anxiety, the fear, and all those things. Yep, yeah. you know, I'm still sitting here right now, and I have, you know, I have a lot of experience there, but right. I would have traded that out earlier. And if I could speak to the younger generation, you know, here's here's the reality. If if you don't like who you are and you don't like who God created you, there's only one of you. There, there's, there will only be one of you. <laughs> yeah. The revelation that you have to get right now as a 13, 14 year old or a 17, 18 or a young adult or even older is that you have to like who God made you. You don't have to worship who God made you. Right, right, right. But you have to like, and the mm. Bible says, Matthew 22, 39, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, if right. you don't like yourself, how in the yeah. world are you going to love your neighbor? That's right, yeah. Yeah. And so that was the revelation for me, you know, that God was going, hey, God, what do you want me to do? Servant. Mm. And God's going, what do you want to do? Son. Son. Mm. And I went, I don't know. Because <laughs> I've been so busy serving you for all these years, God. Wow. That I don't know exactly. Yeah. So this last journey of the road disappearing is God going, I want you to be my son. You ain't got to perform for me. Yeah. I already, I already did all that. You're wasting your time if you're trying to perform and impress me because yeah. I'm I already know who I am. Mm -hmm. I want you to know who you are and I want you to walk as a, my child for the rest of your life. And, you know, Ryan, your your ministry to see the world change, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. To see every teenager mm. find Christ. Yeah, yeah. Well, teenager Long term, you're not going to want to keep sharing Christ if you don't like who God made you. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key. Yeah. Know that he loves you first. The great, the great, Really, the essence of the gospel is God saved my life. Yeah. And he loves me and he's proud of me. <laughs> and I want to tell you about a God who loves you and is proud of you. Yeah, that's right. My friend at the cafe, in the cafeteria yeah. at school, mm -hmm. not you're going to hell. Right, right. But... God wants to save you from hell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He loves you that much. Yeah, and now I'm a person who didn't care f much for myself. Now I love the person who God made me, and I want to tell you about that God who said I'm okay and who yeah. saved my life. That's it, man. That's the essence. Find that identity in Christ and your Creator. The world, you know, and who, especially. And who wants to follow? Who wants to follow a person's, you know, a path? Who's miserable? Right, right, yeah. There's too many miserable Christians <laughs> right, who right. are tormented. It's because they don't know who, who they wants are. that. Yeah, yeah, this whole world is filled with torment. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't want to jump in. They don't want to jump into something with with right. you and me. If 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 Ryan and Byron are tormented too, it's like right. all right, got that. Right, right. right. They want to. They want to look at you and me and go, man. There's something different about them dudes. Yeah, they know who they are in God, and there's some peace, and they're not running around like a crazy person. I want that. Right. Yeah. And that's what the early church did. People saw like those people are different. Yeah. How do you have a peace in a world that is crazy, you know? And that's what the early church had uh, in a world that was not This is the hook. Yeah. yeah. This is the hook yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, peace is at a premium. Yeah. That's right, man. Where do you get it? So, earlier you mentioned a verse and I think this is true because a lot of people can think, well, if I'm in Christ and I know my identity, then I'm never going to suffer. I'm never going to have difficult times. I'm never going to go through a hard season. And we all know anybody that's walked with Jesus for five minutes knows that's not true. But, man, what is the hope then? Uh, and you mentioned Romans 8, 28, right? That Romans 8, 28. So, so here's where I'm at now. And, I'll, you know, I want to share this because it's, you know, a lot of times we're, we're terrified of what might happen what we live in dreads and regrets, mm -hmm. the regrets from the past that are covered by the blood of Christ. Yeah, that's right. The dreads are what may happen in the future. And we talk about this too much that, you know, you know, yes, in this world, there's pain and sorrow. Right. Christ right. said it, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so what I've learned is that more than anything, as we approach life, God's going, you don't have to be afraid. I'm with you. That's You're right. not alone. <laughs> and all, all things, things can work together for good. I Come am on. actually building you in every situation. Well, what about this loss? This was painful. This betrayal. Um, 
you know, financial crisis, addiction, a family mm-hmm. member with addiction, or maybe mm-hmm. your own struggles. Yeah. And you have to know this, that God is trying to, to turn all of that. Come on. To grow your identity yeah. in him. Yeah. And it happens as Byron Copeland experiences pain. I'm not afraid of pain. Pain happens sometimes. There's also a lot of wonderful joy in this world. That's right. But pain happens, and we just surrender a little bit more through every one of those moments Mm -hmm. because we just do, because we're going to curl up to God a little closer. God, I'm I'm sad. I'm grieving. This happened. And well, don't interpret that as (laughs) God doesn't love me. No, it's like run to God and let him comfort you. Yeah. Let him let him soothe you and be there for you. Mm-hmm. And every time we do that, we grow our identity in God. So don't be afraid of what might happen. Live life. And when those hard things happen, yeah. know that God's right there with you. Yeah. I love that because I, you know, it's you know, as you walk in these realms of ministry and life, it's like God's gonna call us all to take steps of faith. No matter whether you're quote unquote in full time ministry or not, in your business, God's gonna call you to take steps of faith. In your family, God's gonna cause you to call you to take our our walk is a faith walk. And here's the beautiful thing. Even when by the world standards it looks like we failed, God's like, I'm working all things together for the good to those who love me and are called according to my purpose. He's working in all things. And so, man, golly, I wish we could do this for two or three hours. And we're, we're, I, I just so thankful for just wisdom you shared. And I know uh, this is funny because those of y'all listening, you know, we kind of, I kind of give an outline or a script. Hey, here's a way we could go. And I sent it to Byron and Byron's like, man, I ain't reading that. We're just going to free flow. And I was like, now nah, I know it's going to be good, man. I love it. So, man, thank so you. So unscripted, yeah, right? Unscripted by faith, man. This whole thing was by faith. By so, faith. That's right. So thank you so much for being here. Hey, yeah. people, I know, man, you're putting out leadership stuff every day uh, on Instagram and things like that. Where can people find that? How can people find you on social media? Yeah, Byron Copeland uh, on Instagram, and mm-hmm. I have a Facebook, but none of you guys who are listening are on Facebook. Oh, there are it's some, all on I Instagram. promise you, man. There's some, yeah, yeah. Uh, but check, yeah. check it out. You know, I'm just, I'm dropping some leadership things. I have a burden for spiritual leaders and, and the body of Christ to go, you know, hey, we're all leaders. That's right. And so step in and be a yeah. leader, and here's how you do healthy leadership. So, I've been beaten up along the way, so hey, I've learned a couple of go. things, and that's I want right, to get—I want—I just want to give it away to the body of Christ. Yeah, man, well, you're doing an awesome job. You're such an encouragement, Byron. I love your spirit, brother. I love you. I'm thankful for you as my friend, as a co-labor in ministry, a brother in Christ. Thank you for sharing some wisdom with us today. And, and hey, Ryan, as we quit, hey, hey, keep on changing the world, hey, man. man one one I love at a time, one, one teenager at a time, one person at a time. That's it. We're Thank with you. you. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. And. Hey, as we uh, as we just uh, shut down today, I just want to give a big shout out to Redefine Coffee, where we are recording live today. And uh, Kenyon and Katie Coleman have an incredible spot here. If you happen to be in Grapevine, Texas, anytime, look it up. Redefine Coffee. If you're in DFW, I should even say that. Just drop by. Incredible, it's a great people. place. Great place, man. So thankful for them. And hey, if you like what you heard today, don't forget, share this out with somebody, tag somebody in it that needs to hear a little bit of this encouragement. And don't forget this. Today is a great day to tell somebody about Jesus. One million cent, one million cent, get a train in the queer, 100%. One million cent, one million cent, get a train in the queer, like 100%.